Joining me on the show once again, this time in video form, is Brian, the professional predator Rogers, uh, who's got himself a uh, big fight here at 205 pounds. He's moving up to lay heavyweight, take on Virgil Swicker at Bellator 147 on December 4th. Brian, how you doing? I'm well, I'm well. Can't complain at all. Thanks for, for having me back. Yeah, and, and I appreciate you being on the show. I know you're doing double duty here. Uh, you're walking the dog. You're doing everything. Uh, you know, you're always a guy that's, uh, you know, always constantly busy, uh, but always uh, manages uh, time to juggle things. And I know you haven't fought in a while. You know, how has uh, work life been going, uh, you know, as far as everything outside the cage? It's been good. So, you know, since I've been in Denver, Denver's become like a bit of a tech, tech booming city. So when I first arrived out here, I was just training and fighting, but needed to do something else to keep busy. So I worked for a company called Zen Planner for a while, which does like member management software for uh, martial arts and fitness businesses. And recently I just switched over to the company uh, called 97 Display, which actually is sponsoring me as well for my next fight. But we, we, uh, we basically produce websites and um, do SEO, internet marketing for martial arts and fitness businesses. So like, it's pretty cool. Quite often I talk to you know people involved in MMA, martial arts and what have you. And every once in a while they know who I am actually, which is kind of funny. So just been balancing that and training. I uh, work from home now, which is great with my training schedule. Oh, awesome. Okay, that's good. Yeah, just because, like, my last uh, camp, you know, when I was working, going into Beltran, like, it was just tough being in the office and balancing both. Yeah, no, absolutely. Having to run around a lot. It must be a lot nicer uh, being able to work at home. Um, but I know you teased a couple months ago on social media that you would be moving up to 205 pounds. Uh, you are obviously got a 205-pound fight coming up here. Uh, why, why the move? Why, why uh, the decision to move up to 205? So, you know what, uh, a lot of people know, I played football in college, and I played football in college, I was about 235, and then, like I said, I kind of changed my strength and conditioning when first getting in the game, um, I just started to kind of, I started to shrink down a little bit, and also, this is like mid to late 2000s, when everyone is like cutting, like the weight cutting booms kind of happening, so, you know, it's, it's kind of advised to go to middleweight, I was able to do it, you know, fairly well um, for a while, but then the cut has just become just like way too much. Like my last fight, I was only able to diet down to like 210 maybe or something like that. It was either 204 or 210. I was just looking at my notes last night. And on Sunday night before the Beltran fight, I drank like three gallons of water, prepping for my water load. And I went to bed at 220 the week of the fight and then made 185, you know, that Thursday for the fight and whatnot, which, you know, I'd like to say it wasn't a problem, but it wasn't easy. So, you know, and I made it and it was fine. I had not in my mind, I didn't have my best performance. You know, I didn't get finished or anything like that, but I just think it was compromising my energy and my durability and taking away from like my speed, my power and athleticism. So my coach, Mark Montoya kind of advised like, you know, he was like, you know, you're getting bigger, your body's changing, you're getting older. He was like, we should look at changing a weight class. He's like, you know, you've never been, he's like, you never been beat because you weren't fast enough or anything like that. If anything, your speed's going to increase at 205. I think your power and your durability is going to be better as well. So just kind of rechanged my uh, training conditioning. I trained at a place called called uh, Stedman Hawkins out here in Denver, which um, kind of led by Lauren Landau and Eric Telly, which people kind of Google around are pretty famous in uh, sport performance. If you, uh, a lot of NFL, NHL, MMA athletes, baseball, anything you can think of. So been with them um, the majority of this offseason and downtime in between. So now, you know, I'm feeling pretty good. Um, you know, I got a little heavy as you will, you know, it's college football season. So, um, for the most part, I was walking around around two 30 for the most part. If, um, you know, I have too much, you know, Denver craft beer, you know, I'd hit, I could hit two forty pretty easy, but right now I'm going to the fight. I'm about two twenty two, and I've got abs popping in and everything. So it's going to be a much, much easier cut. Yeah. And, and I mentioned there, uh, you know, this fight with Virgil Swicker just came together kind of last week. How long did you know about him being a potential opponent? Uh, Cause you know, this fight isn't that far away. Yeah. Well, it was crazy. So I didn't really think, I didn't know if I was going to get an opportunity again this year. You know, there's a lot of guys on the roster, so I had some up and down performances. So I wasn't really sure where I was going to um, fit in. And originally, you know, I think this date was originally going to be like the cost check debut and stuff. And they had December 11th on the schedule. Well, I think that weekend, that's like three UFC events that December 11th weekend. Yeah. So Bellator kind of switched some things up. I thought it was going to be the 18th potentially of December. And I still didn't know all this on October, November, just kind of training and hanging out. And then I got my one coach got a notification that it might not be till January and I was going to fight Zwicker. So I was like, oh, that's not till next, not till next year. You know, it's kind of rather unfortunate. Mm -hmm. But it ended up working out. So I got like five weeks notice. I feel like maybe the week before Halloween. Does that sound right? Six yeah, weeks notice? Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. So I think that was the uh, the notification, you know. So, you know, I'll tell you, like I said, I was training already. And you can't, you know, you can't pass up opportunity.
No, absolutely not. And, uh, you know, just looking at the matchup here, you know, he's 4-1-1 one, one in his last five fights. A lot of people have short memories. They think he's on a bit of a losing streak. He's not. Um, you know, how do you think you match up against him? You know, I think I match up fairly well. He's deceivingly quick, you know what I mean? Like, he's actually a guy who moves his feet pretty well. He's got a quick trigger on his right hand and uh, has a good motor. Like, his, his conditioning kind of is up and down based on different training camps and fights that I've seen, but he's pretty, he's really durable and just a tough, just a tough guy. So he's not an easy put out by any means, but I like my style matching. I'm not sure I think I'm going to be the faster, quicker person. Um, you know, he's fought at heavyweight, um, you know, before, and I know he even struggles to get to 205, but I don't know if that is a matter of, uh, he's missed weight once that I know of. I don't know the circumstances behind it. I don't know if that was short notice or he just had a bad cut or what, but, uh, versus, he won the fight with Razik Al, um, I forget his last name, but he came a little heavy for that one. Um, so I don't know always, though, if he does all the work to get his weight down or what the deal is with the conditioning and stuff. I don't feel like, I feel like he's going to be a taller person. People are going to look at me, look at him as a bigger guy than me, but I don't see him being more powerful or stronger than me. And I really don't see him being bigger in a different way. I feel like with different nutrition and stuff, he'd, you know, he'd have a different body, a different physique at 205. Yeah, and, and I got to mention some people. I mean, I've seen you fight live. We've, we've met before in person. Uh, you are, you know, might not be the tallest guy in the world, but you're thick. Right. You've got a very thick frame. I think a lot of people don't realize how that can actually be an advantage because, you know, if he's the taller guy, he's going to have to, you know, kind of punch down to get you. And not just that, you know, you got a lot of power in your shoulders, your legs, you know, from the from the background in football, obviously. Yeah, right. You know, my vision kind of going into a five is kind of channeling my inner inner prime Mike Tyson. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, he was a smaller heavyweight, but his speed and power was too much for a lot of people. So, you know, I'm excited for the opportunity um, to get back at it. I feel like, you know, I just, you know, some people maybe cut as much, you know, some, maybe some people cut 30 pounds in a week all the time, but I just feel like it was hurting my performance. And I just wasn't responding, you know, super, super great. Absolutely. Now, we all know you train at Factory X, a great camp out in Colorado, but I notice uh, being as the guy you are that usually travels all the time, I noticed you were in uh, California at American Kickboxing Academy. You made a stop over there. What was it like to get to train with Luke Rockhold and those guys? Yeah, it was cool. It was interesting. You know what I mean? Like, I just know Luke just from some events and things like that. Um, just kind of, you know, just UFC stuff. And, you know, MMA is a small world. And so they know him super well. So I hit my buddy, Stephen Myosik, who I used to train with and asked for his number. I was in town for a rep your university event which is like a basically like a business summit for martial arts and fitness business owners like talk share ideas learn about their stuff and i was there for 97 display um wanted to get some work in obviously so i hit up luke and got through and just did some did some sparring and moving around you know with the guys there uh, bubba jenkins bellas for fighter was there and you know you know that's that, that gym's stacked and full of people so nice and and for this camp specifically who are you working with as far as uh, getting ready for virtual swicker you know he's kind of a tough guy to really put a uh to kind of really i don't know there's not a lot of people that can emulate his style per se um you know but um actually i haven't trained with chris as much as i normally do the last two weeks because he was actually helping weidman out for his camp which is kind of funny kind of funny that i was in california but um so i've done a lot of work with um Dustin Jacoby, you know, is on a hot streak with the glory right now. Dustin's probably one of the best strikers in the world right now. I think he's ranked number four in the world uh, kickboxing right now. And his MMA games, you know, people haven't got to see yet as much as they should, but his MMA game is really nice. But he's been helping me out um, a great a great deal in particular uh, with his striking style. So mostly him for the standout because he can emulate anybody and he's a better striker than anyone I'm going to fight. Let's switch gears a little bit. Uh, it is uh, Sunday. You're wearing your shades. You're, you're looking all dressed up uh, there. You know, it's, uh, your nickname is uh, The Professional Predator. You pride yourself on being a fashionista. Um, what's kind of the trends right now in Colorado uh, if we're talking fashion? I know this might not cater to my audience per se, but just out of curiosity, you know, what's kind of in right now as far as the fashion goes? Uh, Denver's a hipster town. So obviously, like, just like anywhere else, there's, like, there's, there's your man buns and whatnot uh, everywhere. Uh, the flannel flannels are definitely heavy, heavy back in and whatnot. But Denver isn't like a high end menswear fashion town. Like it's there's not many like formal events and things like that. It's like a, it's like a different more. Uh, there's a big vintage and consignment scene out here, actually. So like there's a lot of like great vintage and consignment shops. Like I picked up I got a Burberry trench coat for like one hundred and fifty dollars out here and like bought it pretty sure it was legit and everything and took it to Burberry and they were like yeah this is from 1998 or 1999 mint condition so there's a lot of stuff like that like you can go to a good consignment shop and get you like a pair of Ray-Bans for like 10 bucks and things like that out here nice well so, that's cool that's yeah, definitely that's kinda, interesting kind of vibe 
and, and sticking with uh, the culture, uh, you're a big concert guy. I know you go to a, a lot of concerts all the time to kind of, uh, you know, that's your weekend thing. Uh, what's a good concert you've seen recently that uh, you'd recommend to my listeners? Uh, you know what? So I was actually, it's kind of a funny story. So back on uh, April 20th, um, you know, obviously that's a big day here in Denver for people with the whole 420 thing. I saw um, Snoop, 2 Chains, and ASAP Rocky. And ASAP hadn't dropped his new album, Wanna Live ASAP, yet. But he was kind of like on the artistic vibe and wanted to, play all that and it was bad because no one knew any of his stuff it was it was was not good at all and he was just kind of like denver your energy's low and it was, it was, this was a real weird show well he came back in um the end of september to red rocks which is a famous theater and he was with him and tyler the creator and asap really really impressed me with his uh with his show but denver's a big hotbed like a lot of people are coming through now uh, for music. Actually, I was going to go see Two Chains tonight, but he re- rescheduled or canceled and rescheduled for December 20th, which I've seen him a few times now. And I actually met him at the MTV 12 uh, VMA Awards when I was out there for Bellator. But um, yeah, ASAP Rocky's new album, along with ASAP, was really, really good. He put on a great show. I'm not a super big Tyler Creator fan, but he did a good job uh, as well. And uh, what am I going to find on your uh, iPod right now as far as uh, music, uh, what you're listening to for uh, in preparation for this fight? You know, you got to have some stuff to pump you up, I'm, I'm assuming. Yeah, you know, I kind of got on the future bandwagon a little late, so I'm starting to get start starting to get hip to him. But uh, right now, the new uh, the new uh, MGK album, Machine Gun Kelly. Uh, actually, you know what? I should rep that as the best show I've seen. So my uh, my barber uh, in Cleveland, my buddy Ramon, is friends with um, Dre, MGK's tour manager, and they were coming to town, so they hooked us up with some VIPs and backstage. So I watched the whole show from backstage, and then afterwards hung out with like. MGK and his crew, you know, and everybody afterwards, we were at the concert venue, it was like 2, 3 in the morning, which was uh, real cool. So it was different, like, the sound was a little off being backstage, but it was a real cool, real cool vibe, um, watching it from that angle and seeing how they kind of operate and do everything backstage, and, and I was repping my Ohio against the world gear, and I, I didn't know anybody beforehand, you know, they just kind of, one of those things, they, like, my buddy just made a phone call for me, so that show was awesome, but uh, MGK's new album, Road Tripping, is, is super good, actually, that's the name of it, his name is, the name of his album is General Admission, excuse me, he's on tour right now on the tours road trip and then i went to um i've been listening to that i've been listening to the new travis scott um a lot kind of like his vibes kind of like a little bit of kanye future and uh you know him himself and, and wayne and two chains kind of mixed vibe there's a lot of auto-tune stuff but liking his vibe but mostly uh that I listen to right now i'm actually pretty excited unfortunately you know uh, while i'm fighting in san jose ohio state lost yesterday but i plan on going to san francisco to watch the big 10 title game which they're now out of but then on Sunday in San Jose, uh, Travis Scott's in town with the weekend, um, Toronto Zone. And um, so they're on tour together right now. So I'm going to stick around Sunday and going to try to go to that show. Good stuff. Well, uh, first, it's, it's got to be December 4th, uh, taking on Virgil Swicker. How do you see this fight ending? You know, um, he's a guy you got to worry about. He's tough and durable. He's not easy to put out. He's got a great right hand. Um, I don't think he does a whole lot on the ground. People know me. I don't always do a whole lot on the ground either, but it's just about, you know, I got to avoid his right hand. That's his, that's his, that's his fight ender. You know, he's got a great left hook as well, but I just got to be, I got to be smart. I got to, you know, I got to be smart. I got to use my angles. He loves to brawl, you know, at times I do as well. So we'll see what'll happen, but I just need to be, need to be the smarter fighter. I don't want to give away too much. I'll, uh, I'll tell you off camera what the game plan is. <laughs> Absolutely. No, completely understand. And uh, Brian, I really appreciate you joining me here on the program, especially on a Sunday. You know, you could be doing a million things. Uh, just uh, remind my audience where they can get a hold of you on social media and uh, give any shout outs you need to, man. The floor is yeah. Yours. So my Twitter and Instagram is uh, B-Raj the Predator. Um, it's pretty easy to find. Um, the big thing I need to rep is <clears throat> I'm helping out with a charity called Kids Capes of Courage. So a good friend of mine, my friend Alex Rowland, his mother, uh, Debbie Rowland, started his charity. So basically, they do capes, capes like you would for a superhero, uh, for kids that have a variety of illnesses, whether they're terminally ill or just are in some sort of need or whatever. It's a complete nonprofit charity. So I have a GoFundMe going that I've been launching through my social media. I'd like to raise $2,500 by Christmas. We are currently at like 200 So um if you follow my social media i'll put out the link um hopefully you know you can put this out for me as well so that's kind of the biggest thing um my corners and i will all be rocking capes to the cage uh when we rock out um um i believe uh future legend is going to be sponsoring me as well uh cruise combat uh for doing all my custom shorts and embroidery um shavanic realty in stowe ohio my buddy jacob coker um is a real good realty guy on the areas done some things for me um kind of mind blanking because i don't have my list in front of me but i'm gonna tell i'm gonna click off so i don't see you but i can see uh 
I can see my notes. Uh, Lana's egg whites. Um, he's, he's from the San Jose, California area, so that'd be good. His friend crew will be there. Um, Crow's Auto Body, my friend Ed, there in, uh, in Canton there. Um, Spider Tech Kinesio Tape, which definitely keeps me together. And any athlete who's in a Kinesio Tape, Spider Tech definitely has the best. They're pre-cut, specified to your body part, so you don't have to, you don't have to be real scientific. They're also based out of Toronto, actually. Um, you know, you can cut and put that wherever you want to help with recovery, things like that. Uh, and also, like I said, my company, 97 Display, if you're a web, if you're a martial artist and you're a fitness and business owner, uh, and you need to talk to me about a website or internet marketing leads, definitely reach out to me, Brian at 97display.com or just go to 97display.com and reach out. We'll get your website together and get you those leads you deserve. 